Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, this is going to be a video response to Billy Hearst, his 200 subs contest. Um, I've been meaning to get around to doing this video and kind of put it off all last week, so I wanted to make sure that I shot it tonight while I had a moment. Um, so yeah, Billy, I want to start off by saying congratulations on the 200 subs. Um, one of the kind of, I guess, new guys I'm getting to know in the VC, and uh, not new as in he hasn't you know been around for a little while but I think more so in the sense that uh, I was kind of not doing videos for quite some time and kind of coming back to the VC now so there are a lot of new faces that I'm starting to kind of bump into and guys I'm meeting and Billy was one of, one of the new people I've met so a uh, really cool guy very talented guy great collection great taste in music um, he's really kind of all over the board like me which is nice because that you know I always find it really easy to, easy to connect with people like that so uh yeah billy man it's, it's been awesome getting to know you so far i definitely look forward to i know we've chatted about you know hanging out sometime and doing some digging and all that cool stuff so i definitely look forward to that as well so yeah man here's to you and your 200 subs contest um and basically what billy wanted us to do was to take our name whatever name that might be our actual name our username whatever the case may be and get an album that starts with and show an album for the for the, each letter in your name is kind of what it was so beyond that he gave us kind of a lot of wiggle room what we wanted to do so I tried to think about maybe doing some type of a theme you know to help me kind of narrow it down so the theme I came up with is um, the, the very first you know so, so all these things that I'm about to show here kind of reflect somewhere on the, the first time with something you know so but that's kind of the theme I decided to go with. Um, and so I'm going to use my username instead of my regular name. So I'm going to use Mr. Hall of Fame. Um, for those maybe that don't know, because I know I answered this about three years ago or something like that. But uh, Mr. Hall of Fame basically came from, I was on the computer one day and I was getting ready to set up some stuff. And I was, you know, uh, trying. I think, I think actually YouTube might have been one of the things. But I was looking to... Uh, you know set up a username and I got a call from my coach at that point in time from the, the college I used to play at and he told me that I had been in, inducted into the, the Hall of Fame and so kind of right after that call that's what came to my mind to use as a username so that's where kind of Mr. Hall of Fame came from so uh, that's the name I'm gonna use and let's just kind of jump right into it so we'll start off with M um, I'm gonna start with this one here which is Megadeth. Of course, this is Countdown to Extinction. Everybody knows this album. Now, this this actually represents a couple of firsts for me. Um, I, I used to do, it's kind of a long time ago, I used to do uh, bodybuilding competitions. And the first competition I ever went to, I, did, I, didn't, really, I didn't know Megadeth at the time at all. Because early on, you know, when we look, look back at high school and stuff like that, I was pretty much into like the hair metal 80s stuff and then of course when grunge came along went down that path but I kind of discovered thrash metal later and had to go back and discover the testaments and exodus and you know all that stuff and you know Megadeth even the old Metallica so I was at my very first bodybuilding competition and I was of course nervous as crap you know, about to go on stage and buck naked in front of how many people uh, but there was a guy that I met back there and we started kind of talking and everything and so he went out before me in his group and so I kind of watched his posing routine from the side and he posed to the song Symphony of Destruction and I remember seeing that or hearing that song and I was just like, like holy cow what is that that was freaking awesome I mean the first time you know you hear Megadeth and it clicks or whatever and so you know later on that night we were talking and he kind of told me you know Megadeth, Symphony of Destruction. I went out and got the CD a couple days later, and that was my introduction to Megadeth. So that was my first Megadeth experience that goes along with my first bodybuilding competition. So moving on to the next first. Um, my older brother, who had been into a lot of music throughout his lifetime, and um, anyway, I won't try to keep a long story short. When he got his first boombox, which is really kind of the first stereo type of thing that we'd ever had in our home. Um, I remember he brought it home and it was just like the coolest thing in the world with his 10 double D batteries and the whole nine. 
well I mean, we were living in the projects at the time. We didn't really have, you know, money. So he wasn't going out and just buying tapes and everything else. It was just a, it was a crazy event that he even got that boom box. So I remember one of the songs that he had on one of the two or three tapes that he played over and over and over. It's the first song I ever remember him playing with all the other stuff that I discovered from him, you know, years down the line. But the first song my older brother ever introduced me to was off of this album, which is Ray Goodman and Brown, and it's the song Special Lady. I remember him playing that song all the time, and like I said, with the thousands and thousands of things he's introduced me to over my lifetime, especially you know, talking musically, this, I think, was the first song I can remember him ever introducing me to. So that was a, a huge first there. Another first, too, which kind of goes back to the first time I ever really heard this band, and again, had to go back and discover their old stuff, is Heart. And it's the song, uh, Who Will You Run To? The, the name of the album, of course, you can see there's Bad Animals. And in our art class, I remember our teacher used to let us listen to the radio. And I remember the song, Who Will You Run To? coming on the radio and hearing that for the first time. And that was kind of my introduction to Heart. Um, yeah, so again, this just kind of reminds me of, you know, a band that I love to death and has, of course, a long history, long catalog, and this was my first introduction to them. So that covers my H. And then over to the O, I'm going to go with Of Monsters and Men. And what I'm going to say about this being the first is this album... Of course, you know, the one of the, the main members of the band is, um, I forgot her last name, it's like an Iceland name, one of the, but her first name is it Nana, I believe, Nana or Nana, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but um, this was kind of my discovery of her, and I say that in the sense that there, there is something about her voice that is just kind of magical to me, it, it's, um, it almost gives me a sense of a Janis Joplin, um, and again, I've said this before, not in that she has the same soul as Janice, because I mean, they don't come anywhere near each other with what Janice did from a soul perspective, but there's just something so unique and and truthful about her voice that uh, it's it's been a while since a, a female artist, especially on the kind of pop side of things, um, I guess you wouldn't necessarily call them pop, but you kind of know what I mean, away from the R&B side. Um, that I've really gotten that type of feel or impression from uh, that's just I've heard that much magic in their voice so you know I kind of take that as a first that it's been a long time since a female vocalist has impressed me the way that she has and um, so I just kind of chose that as a first there first in a long time maybe now the next one here is so I guess we're moving on to um, well, we're still at F now Mr. H of so, no, yeah, we're on F now. And I'm gonna go with Fleetwood Mac. And the first that this reminds me of is the first time that I almost cried in the VC hearing a story. Uh, I think this, this might've been the first album that somebody used that, that brought about all that type of impact. And what it was, and I was kicking myself in the because I was trying to think about this right before I pushed start on the video, because I cannot remember his username. Uh, he was from Texas, really into the psychedelic thing. Uh, he doesn't really post anymore, I don't think, because I haven't heard from or seen anything from him in a long time. But anyway, he told this amazing story about, and again, I'll give the short version. His uncle was sick and in the hospital, and they didn't think he was gonna make it very much longer. And he used to talk to his uncle about music and stuff like that. And so one day they were talking about the song Landslide and his uncle had just, he had never heard it. And so he said, okay, well, next time I come, I'm going to bring my guitar so I can play it for you. And so it's like, okay, well, they didn't make it to that next time. His uncle passed away. And so he was really kind of, you know, sad about not having the opportunity to play that song for him and everything else. Well, after they left the hospital, they stopped somewhere to get something to eat. And when they sat down to eat, sure as you know what landslide comes on on this you know on the the, the stereo and so he kind of talked about how he knows that that was his uncle telling him that 
he did get a chance to hear that song and he knew what it was and it was his uncle talking to him because this happened just like right after the um he passed away so yeah that was one of the first times that i was almost moved to tears in in the vc just by hearing you know a story that was that powerful so every time i hear that song or see, even see this album cover it makes me think about that so that was the first Another first two, my first introduction to hip hop was this right here. African Van Baden, Soul Sonic Force, using the F in force here. Planet Rock. The song did exactly what it said. My cousin Theron, his mother bought this album. Man, he played it that first time. My jaw was on the freaking ground and we literally listened to it 10, 12 times in a row after that. I mean, and this this opened all things hip hop to me. In case you hear that in the background, the name of that song is a uh, Jerome by v Sir Victor Uifo, my favorite African song of all time. Um, but anyway, moving right along. So now we're on um, see the A of Fame, and we're going to ACDC. Who made who? This was the first AC, ACDC album I ever heard. Did not know about the group, it had no clue about them. I moved to a new neighborhood, friend gave me a dub of this tape, and all things ACDC started for me. So this was the first ACDC I ever heard. The next first, going to, uh, uh, what are we, M here, yeah. MC Hammer, let's get it started. <laughs> you didn't see that coming. <laughs> now, what was this the first? This was the first concert I ever went to. MC Hammer and Oaktown Seven, o Oaktown Three Five Seven, first live concert I ever saw, and it was freaking great. <laughs> so that was the first there. Last but not least, uh, the E. We're gonna go with Duke Ellington and John Coltrane. I'm kind of using the. E and Ellington, Ellington, Ellington here. Sorry about that. Now I say the first because if you look through my collection, uh, I have more John Coltrane stuff than anything. Probably close to double than any other artist or group. Uh, love Coltrane. Um, you know, Love Supreme is probably my favorite jazz. Not probably. It is my favorite jazz album of all time. And Coltrane is absolutely amazing. This album namely the song in a sentimental mood was my introduction to john coltrane so this was the first coltrane thing that i heard that i said like whoa what was that and oddly enough or interestingly enough i'll say i heard it on the cosby show of all places um and that was one of the things that was so genius about and what i love that bill cosby did on that show was um you know what like February is Black History Month, and we all know that. You know, do I like that? Yes. Do I understand why we do it and we have it? Yes. At the same time, does it bother me that we're carving out a month and saying we're going to dedicate it to a certain group of people? And yeah, that kind of bothers me too. You know, um, the more things that kind of make us separate, the more those things typically bother me. I, I guess I feel like I'm at a point in my life and my existence where man is man and people are people and anything that deters from that kind of bugs me a little bit. But anyway, I kind of say that just to say what Bill Cosby was just a genius at doing on that show. He wasn't a, you know, look at this, let's celebrate back history month or whatever else. He just inserted a lot of the great things that he appreciated, um, you know, through black history and stuff like that. So he wouldn't make a big deal about saying, let's celebrate John Coltrane or let's celebrate Tailwind Turner or, um, or, you know, or all these different or even like Ray Charles and all. You know, he didn't make like this big thing about it. He just put it on and he was like, you know, these guys are geniuses and these guys have done some of the most incredible stuff. Guys and gals, for that matter, have done some incredible stuff and I don't have to shove it down your throat. I'll just put it on when you hear it you know you'll take to it period and I, and that's what he did with so much I mean 
between Turner and, and uh, John Coltrane, um, even a lot of Ray Charles stuff. I really didn't know Ray Charles until watching The Cosby Show. You know, and all the different places where he utilized that. Dizzy Gillespie, I mean, all those guys. Uh, and I, so I really love him for doing that. I love the way that he did it. And so that's where I discovered In a Sentimental Mood. You know, he was kind of loving up Claire one time and they were, you know, doing the stupid dances he does in the living room. And he just had Coltrane playing in the background. And I was just like, that's good stuff. But, uh, so anyway, yeah, there you go, man. That's Mr. Hall of Fame all spelt out. Um, again, congratulations on the subs. Uh, definitely be back there to do your 300 subs contest. And, um, yeah, that's about, well, I guess I'll show you this too since I'm sitting right here. Just in case you're curious what's playing in the background. That's what's uh actually like that's what's spinning in the background. Just felt a little worldly tonight. So uh okay, yeah, congratulations, man. Let me know what you think, and uh we'll talk to you soon, VC.